This episode is powered by Cauliflower Combat, guys. If you want to head over there, check out caulifloworcombat.com. Use my code. It'll get you a discount when checking out. Cauliflower Combat, guys. Sal, Clash of Combat, all powered, all powered by Cauliflower Combat, including Jack's Forest and Ladarian Locket and myself. So head over there. Use my code right here in the description below and uh, tell them I sent you. Guys, it's Wednesday. Y'all know Wednesdays are for wrestling. You got episode five of Buck and Blogs. We got a special edition here for you. Buck is in Hershey. It is the state tournament week here in Ohio, in Pennsylvania. I'm excited. Uh, myself and Jess are going to be in Columbus this weekend covering the state tournament, bringing you all that action. Uh, Buck, he's in PA, getting ready to coach, hopefully, Rune Lawrence to a fourth state title in PA. So that's exciting. We got that going on. You got conference weekend with Big Tens, uh, and the Max, SoCon, Big Twelves. You name it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy weekend of wrestling. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Don't forget again. This episode is powered by Cauliflower Combat Gear. I don't know if you saw the new merch drop that's gonna be coming out April third. But with Clash of Combat, that special capsule drop is gonna be sick. Make sure you click on that link in the description as well as Four Seasons Construction and Roofing. Give those guys a call and tell them Drew sent you. So, uh, yeah, let's jump into it, man. Buck, you're in Hershey. How is it, man? How's it going over there? Yeah, um, I'll tell you what, it's it's going well. Just had a short, you know, three-hour drive. You can smell the chocolate when you get into town here. Uh, so ever since I've taken over the program, we've had a guy in the finals. This is, um, you know, so far going on six straight years, looking to go seven. Um, it's the second longest active streak in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, so the other cool thing is, is what started out as a, a truck ride with one is now a van ride with four guys. So uh, it's grown in the past seven years. Um, did very well last week, looking to capitalize on it. Um, I'll tell you what, though. You know, you just talked about all those conferences having those that wrestling going on. That's a bummer for PA and Ohio kids that it's we have the, to miss. I I've, I know I've been you know Jess and I were were credentialed for Big Tens. I had the wrestle wrestlers grind reached out to me yesterday. He's like, hey, do you have the lady the person's email for Big Tens? I got to try and get somebody in there. I'm like, well, actually, Jess and I aren't going. Maybe they'll let you take take our place. Um, I'm super bummed about it because we did. We got to cover Big Tens last year. It's a blast. Like, there's nothing like the Big Ten championships. Nothing like it at all. And I think even from a coaching perspective, it's it stinks because the co college coaches want to be in Ohio and Pennsylvania to watch those state finals, and they can't. You know, and the, the MAC championships are at Kent State, so I do know that some of those coaches are going to be able to make it down to the state tournament for the finals on Sunday for sure. Um, but yeah, man, I would love to be at University of Maryland this weekend. I I love the Big Ten. There's a reason that Jess and I cover it. It's I mean, it's the premier conference in college wrestling. I I love it. Uh, and they've been the Big Ten's been very very good to us as a company. It drew blogs. Like as I I've talked about it before, they got us in last minute last year, the Big Ten championships. Um, you know, so AJ AJ Ed's actually not, was a big help for us. He he helped uh, get our foot in the door. So shout out to him. He's on the football side of things now. But uh, he liked what he saw last year at Big Tens and said, if you guys want to cover anything else, please let me know. Uh, so that, that's a bummer that we, can't, that we can't be there. But, hey, I wouldn't have it any other way, man. The state tournament, I haven't got to cover the Ohio State tournament yet as a company. And now, now that we do, like, I, I'm, I'm stoked, man. This is, this is, I'm going to get to watch some of the boys uh, and girls because they run it at the same time. Boys and girls, you're going to get to watch dreams come true. Kids have been working their whole lives for this. Um, you know, some of the kids that I've trained when I first came back to coaching, they found, they've found themselves to the state tournament. These local boys that I worked with for a few years, they're part of my first freestyle club, Isaiah and Noah. Um, I'm excited for them. I think they both can get on the podium. And then you got my, you got my St. Edward Eagles, my, my boys, though, there is no, I have never been around a team that is so fun. Unlike these boys over at St. Ed's They are it's a special group. They're a great group of kids that just, they, they know how to have fun, but they know how to be serious and they know how to get it done. Um, and, and they, you know, being able to film in the room while they're shooting hoops or just having a good time, uh, lightening up the mood. Not, it's not just always about wrestling, but they, they, 
come March, St. Edward's always prepared. John Heffernan has that team ready to go. Um, Chase has been up there. Uh, he got to shadow last week or yeah, last week and, you know, got to watch a practice. So he's, he's seeing what it's about now too, but I'm excited for these guys. A, a lot of kids too, not just the St. Ed's boys. Um, you know, some of the local kids that qualified for state, like I said, I'm excited for that, but we're, we got kids from D2, D3 and D1 that Jess and I are going to be covering. It's a, it's going to be a busy weekend, but it's going to be fun. And there's no other show like they do a good job of presenting the state tournament in Ohio. And uh, you got parents bringing their kids, parents bringing their kids to watch, to like experience it for the first time, you know, and, you know, cause that's eventually, that's the end goal for these kids. That's where they want to be in high school one day. So they, uh, they bring them there to, you know, but, but I try to tell these kids, I'm like, there's nothing, you know, you can go there you're watching, you're in the environment, you're there, but there's nothing like walking out of that tunnel. You can sit there and watch, but walking out of that tunnel is way more nerve wracking. There's a big difference there than just watching, you know? No, I agree. I'll tell you what, uh, the cool thing, you know, uh, about here being in Hershey, obviously you have Hershey world, get here to make your own chocolate bars. Can you really like smell, can you really smell the chocolate there? Oh, absolutely, dude. You can smell it. It's like when you're driving through town and things like that, you can really smell it. I uh, see. I don't, I don't remember that. Be so like, uh, uh, Hershey PA, when I was a little kid and I had the chemotherapy, um, my parents, um, obviously they didn't know if I was going to live or die at stage four cancer. And so they were, we, we went through Hershey PA on our way to Philadelphia where my eye doctor was, and we would stop and stay there for a weekend. And I, right. My grandmother passed away about four years ago and in her house, she had this photo until the day she died, hanging on her, in her kitchen, not her kitchen, her, her, uh, her dining room. And it was a picture of me my grandmother and my mom and dad on the little Hershey ride as you drive, ride through the factory. And, um, I, I took that picture when she died. So it's now at my house, but I can remember being in Hershey PA and it was right after the chemo. I'd started getting sick and I remember not wanting to even eat Reese's cups, but yeah, I couldn't tell you. That's why I asked you that. Cause I don't, I don't remember it smelling like chocolate when I was there, but, um, but yeah, that's cool. That's really neat that you can smell the chocolate right there in Hershey. The, 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 the other cool thing is, is, you know, um, Obviously, we, you know, Ohio has three divisions. Pennsylvania has two. Um, there's some big time matchups. Um, you know, I think in the one state bracket, I think at 121, I think there's three state champs in the PA bracket. There's Louis Gill and I think oh, two yeah. others. Uh, yeah, you got Louis Gill, you got uh, Seidel, and uh, who's the kid from Faith Christian? Or no, Seidel is the kid from Faith Christian, but there's uh. Is it Butero? I think he's one of them. I, I'm gonna. I gotta pull that up. That's that's one that I. I. I Louis Gill's weight is gonna be a fun one at Double A, man. That oh, is yeah. gonna be a fun weight. There's some hammers. Um, and I'll tell you what. Um, you know my guy, Ruben Lawrence. He's got a, a tough match. There's a guy. Um, I think he's ranked top twenty in the country. His name's Austin Johnson. He's returning state champ at two fifteen. He lost a uh, Carrera four three at a Pirate. Tough guy. Um, they say it's, they say it could come down and be in the match of the tournament. You know, I, I'm excited for it. Um, hey, also, um, we're gonna get some action on the news tonight here in Pennsylvania. I saw, um, I saw uh, that man. You're looking, you're, you're, you're famous. You're famous now. You're sitting. Looks like they're like you're looking like you're doing a thirty for thirty, my guy. Um, no, I just, um, you know, we're just, just the opportunity arose. You know, um, and I'll tell you what, the guy asked me a question. He asked me, he said, uh, he said about the parents being nervous, coaches getting nervous and things like that. And he said, what do you feel? He goes, what's your, what's your take on all this? And I said, you know what? I'm going to let it go. I said, at the end of the day, one match doesn't find a man's career. I said, and the other thing is, is it, it really doesn't to me because he's already won three. I mean, if I, I don't even know people, there's people out there that didn't even get the win one. Well, one, I, 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 I'm one. I'm one of them. I'm one of them, I, and I'm and I'm still salty about it because I feel like I feel like I could have got it, but I didn't. You know, no, no, I didn't. So, so that was that was going to be my question because you posted on Instagram. You said he asked me where my bracket was. Now, how close were you? Now, I I obviously know you wrestled for St. Ed's. You you know you were on the number one team in the country at the time. You know you pulled that article. You beaten the kid from Blair. Um, so how close were you? Because I, I don't know this. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, man. I, uh, I, <laughs> so I was a three, I placed at Fargo more than I placed at state in high school. I was a three time Fargo All American. And then, uh, so it was what, fifth, uh, seventh, fifth, and fourth. And then, uh, fifth in the state as a junior. My freshman year, I was behind Lance Palmer, four time D1 All American, and beat Brett Metcalf. So, Obviously, he was pretty good, but I got gold team matches. I got to start my freshman year. He gave me some gold team matches, wrestled in the state duels, wrestled against Bergen Catholic. Only match I really didn't wrestle in was, was the big Blair match. Um, and then uh, my sophomore year, I took fifth. That was the year I took sixth at Ironman. I, I pinned Ben Jordan that year, Jim Jordan's son. I pinned him, and then he beat me five to four later on in the year on a flea in the mat call. Um, and then my junior year after Ironman, I had transferred back to my hometown of Madison. I was obviously had wrestled at Ironman. And so they said, that's the reason why I couldn't compete. It was, it was crappy. I was, you know, uh, predicted second in the state to Tony Jamison, who was another four timer. Uh, so I would have probably got the chance to wrestle him in the finals that year. Didn't get to. So I go out to Fargo. I take fourth place. Great. Um, and then that obviously kept me on the radar and then senior year, I'm the predicted state champ. Hadn't lost a match. The kid uh, that I was likely going to figure I'd wrestle in the state finals was Nick Salzer. You know him. He went on to be a three-time D1 All-American and obviously now is living the dream where he works for the FBI. Um, he had, if you guys know, he had some battles with Kyle Dake. He's just a tough kid from University of Virginia. But, yeah, he beat me. That was my old teammate, and I was 42-0 in the state semifinals, and I lost to Nick Salzer. Five to three. Took sure. me down. Five to three. Took me down on the edge of the mat. How many seconds left? It was back and forth the whole match. Like he would take me down, I'd get an escape. Uh, I was so I I don't I'm not trying to make an excuse, but I, the week before at districts, I got slammed on my knee and ruptured the bursa sex in my knee. I had wa fluid on my I had water on on my knee. So the leg he did get on on I couldn't like he was in on it. So I sat in uh, shin wizard and I couldn't turn to spin around to get on to like the opposite leg. And I just couldn't bend that knee enough to, to scramble out of it. So I tried kicking out of bounds. And when I went to kick, he wrapped up the, 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 the second leg and, and got the takedown. Um, but, yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't enough to, to get the job done, man. And it, it is what it is. But I, I, I finished third. I finished on, you know, I was always taught to just fin go out with a win. I wasn't going to go out of high school without, with a loss, that's for sure. Um, I started high school wrestling with a loss. Uh, and, and I avenged that loss the, the following year at the state duels. Um, but I never, you know, I wasn't going to go out on one. So I, I finished out with third and it was hard to come back and still wrestle for third. Like I was crushed. My, those were my dreams since I was eight years old. Um, and you know, if you're listening to this, you know, <laughs> you know, you probably don't want to hear me talk about my glory. These aren't even really glory days. It's just a, that's why I, I, I enjoy coaching and being around the sport so much because like, I have that unfinished business. I want to see the kids succeed and get over that hump because some kids struggle with the semifinals quarter, whatever it is. There's a, there's a, um, every wrestler has that thing. They got to get over to, to really make or break. And for some reason I had, I always had good luck at Fargo. Um, I wrestled Seth Easter, the, who was the Fargo champ the one year I wrestled him first round at Fargo and teched him. I teched him and he ended up winning the whole freaking thing. And I took fifth. So no, that's but, under the, that's under the old school. I get you. Yeah. No, yeah. The, no. The reason, the reason I, I think it's important to like talk about these things sometimes and to be transparent. You know, obviously that's what we're here to do in our podcast is to be transparent and talk about experiences. Is so people have like lessons to learn. I mean, obviously we're in the we're in the best part of the season. It is the best part, and this is the time that guys and gals have to show up. Um, we got a lot of first. Obviously, you said the girls and guys in Ohio are all wrestling at the same time. This is the first year in the state of Pennsylvania. Triple A and Double A and the girls are all wrestling at the same time. Usually, sessions were split between Double A and Triple A um, and things like that. So, it's like, that's pretty cool um, to get to see this. So, you know, be a part of my generation because, you know, I remember growing up and you probably do too in Ohio. You you weren't going to see many women wrestling and there wasn't too many people that were advocating it, you know, for it to happen. And, you know, the change needed to happen. And I'm glad that it's coming to, for, you know, to fruition and it needs to, and, you know, it's exciting. Um, I know we got some, we got a girl, uh, 
in our area from Canada McMillan, she's going to she's going to University of Iowa to wrestle Division One. Yeah, I remember one of our one of our episodes you had talked about her going to the University of Iowa, and obviously you know the the women's program at Iowa is uh they're they're building something special there, building something special there, just like they've done with the done with the men. That's really that's really cool to hear. Yeah, the girls. I think the addition of girls wrestling to these state tournaments is super important. Like the state of Ohio, state of Pennsylvania, two in my eyes, obviously the the two best states of re- in wrestling. You got Ohio and PA. When you think of that's the forefront that I think of. And anybody that says Wisconsin or other or Iowa, y'all don't have the depth that Ohio has. I'll take that to the bank. No one had, they don't have the depth that Ohio and PA have. I think, and I did, we named our top five states, I think already. And I said, New Jersey, PA, oh, um, California, Ohio, and uh, what, I- Illinois, I think I, I said, you know, but yeah. those are your state. Oh, that's it. I mean, Oklahoma's up there too. And I remember you had Oklahoma in yours. Those are, those are your states, man. Those, those are some winning state titles in that and having women's wrestling is huge, which is what I was getting. Having them on the mats at the same time is huge for the women, huge for these girls that are coming out for the sport for the first time. And the, you know, their, their chance of getting, you know, uh, college scholarships is, is crazy through the roof because there's so many women's programs being added now. It's great. It's great for our sport. So I'm excited for these young ladies to, to, to get to, uh, to go for the second year in a row here at the Jerome Schottenstein arena arena, uh, get to share the mat with the boys. They, they deserve it. They put in just as much work. So, uh, I'm excited. So, for that. Hold on. Let me ask you this. Um, if you had, uh, uh, if you had to pick a match in the Ohio state tournament this year, um, which one are you most excited to see or would, or would you like to see happen? So I want to see, I want to see Omar Ayub and uh, Ryan Bennett. Omar Ayub and Ryan Bennett. That's uh, Ryan Bennett has been obviously he's an Eds guy, and he's had his, um, he's had a rough year. He didn't place at Ironman, but he won Doc B. Um, didn't he took fifth, third or fifth, I think, at Powerade, and he's like he's he's been you know he's had an ankle injury. <laughs> And he, he's just wrestled, you know, he could have defaulted out at Powerade, but he didn't, you know, he finished out, he took seventh, took seventh at Powerade, finished the tournament and won uh, for seventh and eighth. And, and then you got Ayub, who was in the finals at Ironman, who um, lost by decision to Bassett. Uh, Ayub, obviously, you know, fifth place, fifth at, at Fargo, um, pretty, pretty good wrestler, you know, pretty, pretty tough kid. And I'm interested to see, um, you know, you got a Nebraska kid, and it's gonna. You know, Ayub's going to Nebraska. I think that's where he's going, right? I think Nebraska. Um, and then obviously uh, Bennett, who's going to Illinois. That's that's a matchup that I'm really excited to see. I think you could see um, at a hundred and what is it one one thirty two? Yeah, one thirty two. You could get Kane Shogger, who's a freshman phenom, um, who's could cut could have cut the twenty six and probably been the state champ, Division one. But he wanted to wrestle 32 and go after Blaze. And he's obviously probably not just not he's not going to beat Blaze. Marcus Blaze is on another level. We know that. But I'm interested to see where the, you know, Kane's trajectory is. We've worked with Kane, obviously, before. He's a very tough kid for a freshman that knew that he he had the potential to be a four timer, but has chosen the route that most wouldn't do. And he's going to go up and wrestle, you know try and take out Marcus blaze, you know, and I'm sure that's what his, in his mind he wants to do, but it, it probably won't happen. Um, but it's, I'm excited to see that he's got a tough first round match though against Adam Butler, who Adam Butler is a state finalist, uh, returning state placer. So we'll see how Shogger navigates his way through the bracket. And then, um, yeah, there's, you know, 113 pounds. You got gray Burnett, Ethan Timar could be a potential final where you could also get, uh, one of the roar brothers. Uh, from Maslin Perry, like it, that 113 in Ohio Division One is crazy good. Um, with the Green Brother from from Aurora's in it. There's a lot of killers in that bracket, and then you got the Bickerton boy who's at 106, who was a Fargo finalist. Like the, Ohio's got some scrappers at that young that that 106, 113, and I think they're just they're just all at the same weight, man. It's crazy. Um, the scrambles are gonna be insane. Scrambles are gonna be absolutely insane um i'm doing a pick tomorrow so i'm gonna hop on um 
well, you know, obviously you got buck and blogs, but I've been doing the one on my own called blogs talk yeah. and I'm going to do uh dub stat. They, uh, they got 81% uh, of their predictions for districts, right. As their first year, that's pretty good as his, his predictions yeah, were 81%. And he uses statistics, obviously from tournaments, he's got a point system, but it's impressive. Like so that. he's got a, he's, yeah, he's got to pick them uh, for state champs. And I'm, you know, I'm going to go through there tomorrow and pick my state champs. So if you guys want to tune in for that, tune in for that. Um, I'm, I'm excited, man. This, this weekend is, it's going to be so hard though. Cause I, I, I'm obviously, I cover college wrestling and I'm not going to be able to this weekend. So it's like all, all the stuff I do is like jammed into one weekend. So it is, it's really frustrating, but you gotta, you gotta pick the one, you know, that's, you know, what is what it is this year. And I'm, you know, I enjoy wrestling, uh, the highest level, you know, state tournament here in Ohio, obviously college is pretty big, pretty big for me, but it is what it is. Just. I'm going to, I'm excited to be at the state tournament this year and, and watch some of these guys that I've uh, watched wrestle over the last few years, go after state titles. And so, uh, so go, coming back to PA, you know, we're talking about big matches. Um, two, I think number one ranked guys. Got well, wait a beat. second. You remember how we In talked about, we, we talked about 120. I got it right here. So you got uh, at 121, you got returning qualifiers. Uh, Jake Bennett, Gideon Bracken, Cooper Feltman, Aiden Grog, uh, Brock Holderbaum, Jackson Rush, and returning medalist Wenzel, Botero, Fi, Brosius, and Gonzalez um, at at one twenty one there. So the Louis, you got Louis Gill and Botero um, at at that weight. Uh, and hey, how about we're not even at the state tournament and. Number one ranked or number two ranked, Jax Forrest gets beat. And then number one, Landon Sidden gets beat um, in Triple A. We got two top ranked guys that got beat. That's crazy. Yeah, Jax Forrest. I mean, that I was when I was hopped on Twitter last week and saw that. That was crazy. That was, yeah, I, I was I, there. I, that, I was you, there. So that was cool. He just, he just kind of took him out of his element, huh? So uh, I'll tell you what, you, I'm sitting there watching, you know. And all of a sudden, Bargo hits a headlock. And I'll tell you what, the one thing that I... You always got to have a headlock in the back pocket. Uh, always got to right, have it. Right, right. So one thing that I didn't like, and, you know, I'm not saying is these boys are young. You know, Jax is, I think, his sophomore, freshman, sophomore, whatever. He's still a young kid, right? And it was just like... It was like McCourt against the world. When anytime a McCourt kid get taken down or something, the crowd went nuts. I mean, obviously in the beginning it was it was you know if it would have been like hey this is you know this is a really good match like you know Embargo has uh, you know said in the paper he has the most out most respect for those guys because they train hard. And Sidell Sidell's at that weight too at one twenty. Sorry, I'm not trying right, to cut no, you off, but no, 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 it's okay, but. Yeah, but going into that, you know, after that match, it was people screaming, you know, obscenities that they shouldn't have, you know, during the match. Like people are ridiculous. You know, the, the the funny thing is, is in a couple months, those people booing Jack Forrest, then, yeah, they're going to be football. cheering for him when he's holding up a stop sign at Fargo. Yes, yes. or or they'll get be it, cheering man. for him when he's holding an American flag. Yep, hundred percent. You you know what I mean, and and that. That there, like I said, it was a good, clean match. Vargo wrestled his butt off and out-wrestled him. I'm interested to see how Jack Sporters comes back after that. Um, and then he might, not get a point, he might not get a point scored on him. Um, you never know. I mean, he is that good. Um, and then and Triple A at Cannon Mac at 113 pounds, Len Sidden, Matt Scouts was ranked number one in the country, and he ended up losing – I can't forget the young man's name. I beat him, but he was a tough guy and undefeated and beat him five to four or something like that. So anything can happen here in the state of PA. And, you know, just like Ohio, anything can happen. Um, you're right about the depth and things like that. But I I will say this. I feel like as far as, like, teams and stuff, I don't know if we have a team that could compete with St. Ed's uh, overall, top to bottom. Um, that's tough. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you got you got Faith Christian, but I um and, and yeah, I just don't think there is anybody in PA that can right now, at least not right now. Um, 
but yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, they're great, man. They're really good and they get better every year. Um, uh, and I tell people this all the, you'll hear it this time of the year. Yeah. Yep. I know so little Bob, little Bobby Joe's kid was getting recruited by St. Ed's and like little Bobby Joe, I could probably what wasn't getting recruited by St. Ed's. They don't recruit. I don't let me tell you people. They don't recruit wrestlers. I didn't get recruited there. Colin Palmer didn't get recruited there. Nobody got recruited there. We went there because we wanted to get better. We went there because it was the best place for us to go to get better at wrestling and to become a better human being. That's, that's it. Plain and simple. That's it. And I like, I don't, it's the, it, you get people to say, well, there should be, they should separate the private schools and the public schools because they win it every year. Isn't anyone else tired of it? And then you, people are finally, like, no, we're not tired of it because we're watching one of the best dynasties ever built continue its dominance. And guess what? If you want to be the state champ, there's three divisions in Ohio. You can either go wrestle for Bumpkinville or you can come and wrestle in the big leagues and try and win a state title. And I'm sorry, you got to beat everybody if you want to be the state champ. So don't sit there and tell me that boo-hoo, little Bobby Joe from Bumpkinville got beat by someone from St. Ed's. Don't, don't cry about it. Be, hey, beat now, I have a question. Let me ask you this question. Um, is there guys in 3A who would beat the 2A, the two Division two II and the Division one guy? There have been at times. Okay. There have been, yes. Like when the Steber, when Hunter and Logan were in Division three, they were, yeah, they would have walked the house with everybody else, you know? And then likewise with Chris Phillips, the same thing. His only loss in high school was to Ed Ruth. Um, so, <sighs> yeah, then he was from Monroeville too. Like it was insane the fact that they were all okay. there at the same time. And Cam Tassari, who was also an All-American for Ohio State and a four-timer at, at Monroeville. Uh, it was, yeah. they, they were there at the same time, which is the craziest thing. And, and I don't know how anyone hasn't done really a documentary on this yet, but maybe we will. Maybe that'll be a Drew Bloggs exclusive. Um, there you go. But, I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, they, uh, that, sometimes that's the case. Like when I was in high school, that, um, there was a kid named Zach Toll, who I think he went on to wrestle in Missouri. Uh, with the last one of the Lester's and uh, I, he was at my weight and he had beat Ben Jordan that year, I think. And he was a three time D three state champ. Um, but yeah, he would have won it division one that uh, a couple, maybe once, but yeah, it can, it can happen. Like there, it's not, it's not that the, it's just that there's no, there's nobody depth in division three. Like that's, it's not as tough. It's tough, but it's not, not even close like division two, even, like St. Paris Graham, they'll probably win the team title. And they've got some good kids. Tucker's real tough. They got some some solid dudes. But the, like if they re they wrestled St. Ed's this year, I think they only won one match. Um there's a big difference. There's a big difference for sure. And I mean, if you have guys placing at state in division three, you're a top ten team. If you got a guy in the finals, you're top three team, maybe. Um, just how it is. Um so if you get, you obviously got two, three state champs, your team's probably going to win the team title. So, you know, that's always, so the reason I bring up that question, because that's always the question here in Pennsylvania. And me personally, I think as far as teams, I think there should be a private school league as far as teams, but as individuals, this is what I say. Let's, let's figure it out. Let's get top eight guys from the, you know, both from all the regions. All right, let's do a, um, Let's do a 32 man bracket, double way, triple way, doesn't matter because these guys, all, the best guys there, all wrestle each other at some point. You know, let's strap it in there. Let's go over three days. Let's find out who the man is. Um, you know, let's put it up. Let's put it on there because there's no, take you know, all three champs. Um, take all three, ch take all three champs, take all three champs and all three seconds or however you do it and have them wrestle each other on a freaking, on a, on a pay per view card. Simple. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, if we're getting exposure and you know we're we're talking nil, you know, let's let's do that. Let's let's get some money out there. I'm down. Let's do this. Stalemate. <laughs> Stalemate show. Yeah, no, nah, it's gonna be the Drew Blogs. It's gonna be the Drew Blogs. Uh, the Drew Blogs the, Classic. The Blogs, the, the Blogs Brawl. The Buck and the Buck and Blogs Cup. There you go. You know, That's a good point, one. Point point series. We do just want to let you know we got we got eight minutes left on this segment. If you want, we can we can continue on another. If you if you want, here in about another, uh, you know, we'll, we'll close it off. Stop, you know, stop and go to another segment if you want because we got to open up a new Zoom meeting. So, no, um, I think you know, there's just 
I just think there's a lot of excitement here in the state of Ohio and Pennsylvania this weekend. I mean, obviously, a lot of guys get to go to Tulsa. They get to go to University of Maryland. They get to, you know, go watch some college wrestling. I wish, you know, um, I'm glad that we have this excitement going on, but it would be nice to travel to the University of Maryland and watch Big Ten. Oh, my gosh, yeah. What it, what it, absolutely. I mean, there's going to be some really, really, really fun matches. I think a big yeah. So so that's the other thing is like I think there's going to be some serious team. There's going to be some serious upsets in these. Oh my god, 125, 125 at Big Tens is going to be insane. I could you know Ohio State, Ohio State's uh, uh, 25. Brendan McCrone, he's from right down the street. He's a you know this that's the school one of the schools Chase Shadow at Lake Catholic. He's dangerous, man. Brendan McCrone is dangerous and and. You know, I think 125 is going to be a, a it's going to be nuts at uh at the Big Tens. 125, you got and you got the Eds boys. You got Geog at 97, and you got uh Hepner at 65. Both of them going to look to be making some noise. Hey, um, I don't. Hey, watch out, Rocco Welsh, man. I'm telling you, man. I think that's, that's an obvious. Is- that's an obvious. Anyone that has slept on Rocco Welsh has been living under a rock. Rocco Welsh is the real deal, and it's it's look what time of the year it is. It's March. It's March. Anything can happen. And Rocco Welsh is real, real good. So I think he uh I think he definitely plays a huge con- right, especially with Starachi right now. It does Starachi wrestle. Is that's the that's the next question. Is he wrestling? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, let me ask you this. What are some other conferences you feel you're kind of excited about? ACCs are gonna be interesting because they didn't get a, the allocation, they kind of got screwed on the allocations. That's going to be interesting. You got a guy no, like Andonian. Andonian, like- Andonian sat out for, you know, obviously he hurt his knee in the Shapiro match. What's going to happen there with Andonian being banged up? Ed Scott has beat him the last time they wrestled. Eh, what happens? Does Let me ask you this. Does NC State run away with that? Or does uh, or does somebody like Virginia Tech or... or uh, Don't sleep on Pitt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Uh, North Carolina is not sniffing. No, North Carolina is not sniffing that th- that team title. Not this year. Not nothing. And sorry, Tony. Sorry, Tony Ramos. I know <laughs> that, that I'm just saying. I they're not. They're not this year. Um, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a Tony Ramos fan. I'm a UNC fan myself. I think I coach. Give it a couple years. Coach Cole and Tony. Uh, and Tony's uh, obviously associate head coach there now. Like they're. It's gonna. That's gonna be a power. That's a sleeping giant right there. And everybody has said that. Especially that's yeah, why, yeah. So they you said know. so that was funny. Burroughs, you know, put that out there on a tweet or something about a sleeping giant. That is one school that I would pick to be a sleeping giant, along with the University of Oklahoma. Yeah, I, I there's uh so I, I heard a little birdie told me that somebody from the Ivy League, uh somebody from the Ivy League that's a he's kind of a heavy hitter in the Ivy League, could be transferring to um to Oklahoma for the next two years. They got two years of eligibility left. I'm not naming names. They could be wrestling for the Sooners. They're, they're not like a heavy, heavy hitter. I'm not talking Vito or like these guys that you, you're going to think right off the whip. But there's a this dude's pretty good. He's got a pretty good resume. And he, I heard from a little birdie, little source. He's, he's, coming, to, he's coming to be a boomer sooner. Oh, boy. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll, no. Let you know when I find no. that out. But uh, no, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, you know, obviously, uh, transfer portal here in the next couple of weeks is going to be flying off the handle. It's going to be nuts. Hey, Chase, can you make sure you get your sister off the bus? Thanks, buddy. Harper's going to, little Miss Harper blog is going to be getting off the bus. That's all right. Uh, that's family time. No, I'm glad to hear that. We got to, we got to be transparent here. Some people got to know we got kids. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think most people see, they see, they see the post to Harper blogs and her singlets. And uh, obviously with you, you posting your little guy. That's funny. We, we all got haircuts on the same day. You took your little guy and I took me and Harper. We went and uh, she got a little, she got like an inch cut off her hair. She, but she wants Rapunzel hair now. So she is. Uh, uh, so I was like, well, you got to trim it to keep it healthy. So it grows. And so she, she did that. And uh, you know, I'm sure she'll be, and as soon as she walks in the door, I hungy. I hungry, and that kid could eat pizza all day. So, so uh, uh, that's what my we'll man. My, my little, I, I've been blessed. My little boy's not a picky eater, man. 
Um, so he's um, he gets to have a good time, but none of us going to take care of him. And um, the other fun thing is he is going to get to see Daddy on TV tonight. Um, he's going to be on be on the news station. The Daddy's, news crew. That's awesome. You're number. You're you're. Uh, that's your number one fan there, man. That's super cool. He. Uh, oh yeah. He. So you. You obviously. Are, when does wrestling start for you guys in PA? What day does the tournament start? Thursday or Friday? Um, tomorrow morning. Um, at nine a.m. is the first round for Double A. Um, so Double A will go first in the morning, and then um, the girls in Triple A will be there in the afternoon and and in the evening. So they got a new schedule out. Um. So um, it's coming through there pretty good. Um, I think, you know, like anything, it's brand new because we have everybody here. It's going to be some kinks that need worked out. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think this is uh, this weekend is, you know, obviously it's important for everybody, you know, but for, for some of you guys, this is your last this is your last go. This is going to be it for some of you guys. You've put in a lot of years in this sport. You've. uh your parents, you yourself, the camps, freestyle, the Greco, Fargo trips, Virginia Beach, you name it. You guys have put in the work. You guys and girls, you you ladies deserve, the, you know, you ladies have earned your right too, uh, to be at this tournament. You've put in a lot of hours. You ladies have sacrificed blood, sweat, tears, just like the boys have. And I think you got to remember the work that you've put in. And it's not just for wrestling. This is for later on in life too, you're gonna use you're gonna use your wrestlers and wrestler mentality for the rest of your life. It's just plain as day. It's you're, you'll you'll notice that as you get older, like your your wrestling mentality will push you through a lot of things you didn't think you could. Um, so if this is your last weekend wrestling competing ever, enjoy it and, and remember these memories that you have with your family, your teammates. These are memories you'll remember for the rest of your life. Uh, so make them count. Enjoy it. Enjoy them while you're here. Uh, and if you lose, remember, just flip that switch. You got to keep moving because that's what happens in life. You got to keep moving when when things don't go your way. And um, some of you are going to obviously go on to college and compete, but just keep it one match in perspective. Don't be looking at brackets, rankings, all that crap. Don't buy into the, the nervousness energy of the tunnel, the coaches, the screaming, the yelling. Do your thing out there. Um, you know, we've only got – I've got a minute left here to close this up for, you know, for, for the – today's episode but i just wanted to say congratulations you guys all have earned it this is the this is the prime time you know ohio and pa this weekend state tournament two best states two best states in the country uh wrestling their state their final final folk style matches this weekend um you guys you guys can catch me tomorrow bomb blogs talk we're gonna be going through and picking our state champions here in ohio uh quick shout out want to give a shout out to Bo, louie uh, my guys at McCourt, my guys at Reynolds, all over the state. My uh, K my boys from Faith Christian, Kale Whittemoyer. Best of luck to everybody. You guys, you guys earned it. Go get those state titles. And best of luck to you, Buck, and Rune Lawrence going for number four this weekend. But I think episode ten, he's gonna. We're gonna try and do a. We're gonna try and do a live show. We'll be doing it live here from the Blogs residence, I think. Um, so I, as long as as long as Buck's down for that, that's what we're gonna do for episode ten. Yeah, um, I'm down for that. Hey, I, um, I'm i going to go off what you said. I just want to say congratulations to all the guys and gals who made it this far. Um, obviously, it's been a long season for you to be here. Um, obviously, you know, everybody says it's a long day, but it's a long day of wrestling. That means you're doing a whole lot of winning. Um, short days mean that you're probably, you know, own two. So um, just like uh, Mr. Blog said, taking one match at a time, you only got to be one point better. You know, it doesn't matter whether you win by pin, tech, decision, major decision. As long as you get your hand raised and keep moving on. And um, best of luck to everybody. And I look forward to, uh, you know, hopefully we got good news for uh, episode six when I hop on here. That'll, you know, after this weekend, we'll figure out if I'm in a good mood or a bad mood. So um, let's have some fun this weekend. Absolutely, man. You heard the man. Go have fun this weekend. You qualified. You did your job. You qualified. Now you got to do. You've done the hard work. You put in the work. Just go. Go finish what you started. Finish what you started because you 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 wrote those goals down. Now it's time you get to capture those because you'll you'll realize that after you capture those goals, it was the process that you loved uh, more so than just getting that medal at the end. You know, 
that's you know the moments the moment those moments only last a couple seconds so it's the it's the process that you loved was trying to become a, a state champion and, and, and obtaining those goals that's 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 what you love the process um that's what keeps you thriving and keeps you chasing and grinding uh, and best of luck to these college guys you know rocco luke geog Hepner, you know, all the St. Ed's boys that are competing for Ohio State. I wish Patty, you know, I wish Patty Gallagher was competing this weekend, you know. Um, though, you know, I've always, always am rooting for those guys. And, and you know, Bryce Andoni in Virginia Tech, good luck to him. Um, Angelo Rini at, at Columbia. There's there's so many guys that, you know, the streak at St. Edwards can hopefully, hopefully continues this year for NCAAs. It's a new streak that Andonio started, Andonian started back up. Um, so. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I got really this week. So you guys take care, enjoy your weekend. Uh, it's still the week, but enjoy your weekend at the state tournament with your family and your friends. These are memories you're gonna always remember. So we'll catch you guys next week. Uh -huh.